This week I was able to finish a project that had been a year in the making. When we bought the house, we knew there were issues with the roof. We have done our best to mitigate problems, as we knew early on replacing the roof would have wiped out our budget. I should mention that 75% of the roof consists of something called fibro cement sheeting, a cheaply mass produced sheet of cement used mainly on farm outbuildings in France. Terracotta tiles have been placed on top to give the facade of a typical French tiled roof. The main problem with this sheeting is it contains asbestos fibres, rather than cellulose used in the sheeting today. It means you must take precautions when working with it, as exposure to the dust or fibres can cause serious health problems. The first job was to cut down the tree. Not only could it have crashed into the house, but it continually shed its leaves on the roof and clogged the roof sheeting and tiles. Another issue was the guttering. It was either non-existent, cracked or badly needed replacing. The concrete path that goes around the property is not conducive to the longevity and health of old limestone buildings. It holds moisture and with leaking guttering continually splashing water against the surface of the stone, slowly the stone will erode. It also makes the house less energy efficient, as wet walls need more energy to heat. I set about changing the guttering on the extension using zinc guttering and a non-soldering technique I picked up from watching Carl Rogers' video Farmhouse Restoration Gutters. Between each gutter piece we cut out a small slither of the edge which then allowed us to slide the gutter underneath the other piece. More about the process later. If you're a roofing and guttering artisan, I suggest this is the time to switch off. Voila! The first one proved easy as it didn't require a soak away just new guttering, some brackets, or in French, crochet, and a downspout. The runoff was good, and now we no longer had rainwater splashing up against our bedroom. The room now feels a lot less damp. This is also because I rendered between the house and the roof extension where the render had cracked, which was allowing water to run between the walls. Then I tackled the east side of the house. This roof does not contain the sheeting. These brackets are attached to the rafters. As there was no guttering over this part when we arrived, I really wanted to get something up before winter, as the wall was continually getting wet. The problem was that the only downpipe was 15 metres away. It became very hard to do this alone, up and down a ladder with an undulating roof. I managed to get something up, but overall I'm not 100% happy with it. I have a plan how I can improve it, but I may need to invest in some scaffolding first. The other extension proved more difficult for many reasons. Firstly, the roof was clogged with debris from the tree. Heavy rain meant it would sit on the roof and on one occasion leaked into the room below. Luckily, it was in the early days of renovating it. I set about clearing all the debris and applying a strip of butamin tape and a waterproof resin in between where the sheets overlapped. This has so far proved successful, and we have had no leaks since. The second problem we realised was the water evacuation pipe was non-existent. It was constantly getting backed up. It went a metre out into the earth, by the root of the big tree. This was also the downpipe for the entire south roof, as the downpipe for the main roof originally went through the attic of the extension. I decided to create a cheap DIY soak away. Using the digger to create the pit well away from the house. We've already made a detailed video on this, I'll link to it at the end of the video. Recently we got the extension guttering and downpipe hooked up properly to the soak away, along with creating a French drain either side to alleviate any damp issues. As you can see, the roof overhangs here and so hopefully any rainwater coming down will drain away, but in future an additional wall mounted guttering might be the best solution. After taking down the PVC guttering from the south side roof, I noticed the sheeting was clogged with moss. A horrible job was to get kitted up again and remove all the moss on the ends of the sheeting. Afterwards, I applied the same water stop resin to the ends of the sheeting as a precaution, as a few had started to weather. Now it was time to put up some new guttering. I felt more confident as I'd done it a few times now. However, an awkward problem was the sheeting jutted out randomly in the middle. We worked out we would need just over 10 meters of guttering. 
I had several 4 meters and a 2 meter. The plan was to use 4 meters, then 2, then 4. The 2 meter should then cover the overhanging sheeting. The first job was to remove the old metal brackets with an angle grinder, making sure not to cut the sheeting. I should be okay. I wanted to reuse some of the fibro cement brackets, however, the nuts were a bit stiff. WD 40 to the rescue. I wasn't able to find these old style brackets. The newer ones you hammer on or mallet into place. I got it the wrong way round. Pivot, pivot. I put the first four meter piece into place as close to the sheeting as possible. The intention is to eventually put a corner piece to link it with the other guttering. At the moment they don't line up. So for now, two ends will have to do. To connect the zinc guttering together, you have to create a slit in one end in order to slot it into the other. You can use a hacksaw, angle grinder or tin snips. Have I done it wrong? Just don't do what I did here and put a slit in the wrong piece. I've done it wrong. The pitch of the roof was deceptive. I decided to measure the pitch by eye and place a spirit level in the guttering as I went. This is certainly time consuming as you're constantly up and down a ladder and tightening and loosening the nut on the brackets. However, using a string line was never going to work because the roof was so uneven. I used adhesive for the zinc guttering to glue the two pieces together. This is the non-soldering technique which is not common in France. I used another type of bracket on the join to act as a clamp. You can also rivet any joins if you feel they need more support. Once I had 10 meters of guttering up on a good pitch, I now had to add the berth or naissance in French, the point where the water comes into the downpipe, right in the awkward spot behind our massive satellite dish. There was a lot of trial and error, checking lengths and cutting to size. I attached the collars in line and checked where the downpipe would join. I marked the spot on the guttering where the berth would be attached to. Used an angle grinder and snips to cut a hole. Glued the berth to the guttering and clamped until it set. Once slotted and glued into place, I had to connect the downspout using two elbows and connectors. I attached the pieces using the silicon as before, but reinforcing the connection with a few rivets on the upper side. Finally, I attached it to a small manhole cover, as there is a high chance it will get clogged with moss and debris over time. Now I just had to wait for the rain. If you enjoyed this video, do give it a like. We will be back at the weekend with another video and we also have a live chat on the 29th of October. So it'd be great to see you there and if you have any questions do drop them in the comments below and we will try to answer them in the chat. See you then. Bye.